Hey everybody, how you doing? Shula Ruler here. I just wanted to do a quick demo video for you using a demo that I created a few years ago that highlights the importance of bonding in an electrical system. So specifically what happens when the bonding is established and what happens when the bonding is sacrificed in an electrical installation. So let's jump over to the demo and I'll take you for a walk through what we're looking at. So this is our demo, a bit of an overhead view of our demo here. Starting from right to left, I'll just identify some of the components and kind of give you an idea of what we're doing here. So on the right hand side, we've got our power supply, which is going to be plugged into our 120 volt receptacle. Our line one has a five amp fuse in line, and then we have our line one and identified going into our EMT conduit. This green conductor simulates the bonding connection that you would have out in the field, making sure all of those EMT screws and everything are done up tight, as well as lock nuts to ensure that proper bonding path. If you remember in a previous video, the intent of having this bonding path done up was to establish that low impedance path to facilitate operation of an overcurrent device. That's what this five amp fuse is going to be. That's going to be our overcurrent device. So from line one and identified, we have a receptacle. And then plugged into that receptacle, we also have another power supply that supplies a three bulb load bank here. So if you look on our receptacle coming off of our receptacle, this is, I don't recommend trying this at home. I've done this demo many, many times, but we have this little dangerous hook of conductor that's coming off here. And I have that there to simulate what happens in a short circuit condition. So the first thing we're going to do is plug our power supply in so that our load bank is energized, right? So we've got our three bulbs on now. What we want to see now is in normal operation, when bonding is established through the system, what will happen to this overcurrent device if I take this conductor and short it to the box, right? And it's kind of a good check to make sure that the bonding connections are all done. So what I'm going to do is just take this and touch it to the box itself and watch the little fuse right here and see what happens. Boom, right? That low impedance path created a large amount of current. That large amount of current popped the fuse inside or popped the little tripwire inside this fuse. So that was with the bonding connection established. Remember, that's what we want to happen. That's ideal, right? When that overcurrent trips, that is ensuring or that's proving that our bonding is established throughout our electrical system. So in the next example, what we're going to do, I've de-energized everything. Always make sure everything is de-energized whenever you're removing live components, but we're going to replace this five amp fuse with another five amp fuse. And we're going to see exactly what happens again. So we're going to re-energize this, but I'm going to make one critical difference in this system. I'm going to disconnect this bonding conductor, right? That one little green conductor that seems like it doesn't do much. We're going to disconnect it and see what happens in this system again. So I'll re-energize. Notice, first off, with the bonding sacrificed, the loads still energize, right? The loads are still on. This will not indicate to you that there's a problem with your bonding connection. The next thing I'm going to do is repeat exactly what I did in the previous demo. I'm going to touch this little dangerous hook here to the side of my box and we're going to see what happens. As you can see, that hot conductor with the hook on it is now in direct contact with that 1110 electrical box. In this situation, there's a very real but invisible threat. And that's why I created this demo was just to highlight this very real and invisible threat. So right now, the fact that this circuit is not tripped, there is a potential on that box and that EMT of 120 volts. So what I have here is just a standard incandescent light bulb with two leads coming off of it. I'm going to connect one of those leads to the set screw on that connector for the EMT. The other one I'm just going to take to a point that I know to be bonded in this electrical system, which is a face plate, a set screw on a face plate. So check it out. That connection is just on the set screw of that half inch EMT connector. We still have that wire hook connected to the 1110 box itself, which means we still have what should be a short circuit condition. We still have our power supply connected into our 120 volt outlet. Our load bank is still energized. Let's follow our lead. 
We have our 120 volt rated light bulb, which requires 120 volts to fire at full intensity. And all I'm gonna do with this other end that I have in my hand right here, is I'm just gonna touch it right down there to that metal face plate, and we're gonna see what happens. So look, our light is now on. Not touching the face plate, touching the face plate. Not touching the face plate, touching the face plate. The danger in this situation is that light bulb could be an actual human being that's just touching something that's metal that has that potential imposed on it and something else out in the field that has a zero potential to it that's also bonded back to that point where the neutral makes connection to everything metal, right? So it's absolutely imperative that we ensure that we always have that bonding connection in a solidly grounded system to ensure in the event of a short circuit like we just showed you, that that overcurrent has a sufficiently low impedance path to actually open up that overcurrent device. Otherwise, what you get is this floating dangerous situation that we just highlighted here. Hopefully this has helped to further your understanding about the importance of bonding. Uh, in previous videos, we did take a look at grounding and bonding systems and we kind of ran through this situation as well through a PowerPoint, but I just wanted to get an actual real life demo on here. Just something to back up physical evidence of actually what happens when we sacrifice that bonding connection. Thanks for watching. As always, definitely hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and hit that little notification bell if you have subscribed so you can see further upcoming videos. We'll see you next time. You thought I was actually going to leave this fuse alone? No way. What's the point of doing a video where we blow stuff up if we don't blow everything up? Right? So again, we got our fuse. We've got our conductor that's connected directly to the hot on our line power supply and we have our solidly bonded connection here. So here we go. Whoops, now where's that breaker?